That's how we run things. This is the build OGM call for the first day of March, 2022. Um, and part of my question is, do you need to get that, Judy? I think I do. Hang on a second. I'll, okay. I'll mute it from here so it doesn't interrupt. I'll hold my question. Do you want to pause the recording? That's a good idea. <laughs> so many years ago, I bought, I think it's Joe Dominguez. I'll, I'll find him. But he, the Road to Freedom Foundation, uh, and it was really a financial freedom uh, kind of thing. The New Roadmap Foundation, Financial Integrity, uh, and his partner, Vicky Robin, is still around. And they, put a, they wrote a book called Your Money or Your Life. And they're kind of, um, they are kind of like the patron saints of the FIRE movement. Do you know about? Yeah. Oh, financial independence, retire early. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. Money Mustache is kind of, uh, was one of the early bloggers in that movement. And there's a, basically it's a bunch of people trying to figure out how do you reduce your expenses to a minimum? How do you build passive income? How do you, you know, 15 different strategies for just not needing to work? Yeah. Well, I had to learn it on my own. <laughs> I, I know. And these days you can like go on the inner tubes and find support and role models and advice and all that kind of stuff in the middle of all the other crap. Um, you had a question for us. Yeah, so my question was really um, about the the timing of the call, standing calls that we have during the week. And so we have the Thursday call, which is at 8 a.m. on Pacific on uh, Thursdays. And that seems like it's okay it's sitting there, uh, but the other calls don't need to be where they are. And I'm discovering that, that I'm discovering that having early calls every, almost every other day of the week really spun me up and got me like way, way sidetracked. By the time noon came by, I was spinning. Um, and so moving them has made room for a whole bunch of good stuff. And then this week I'm going either for uh, 11 or one or two in still again, Pacific time. Uh, and the problem is that we start to lose Hank and Leif because for Hank, that gets pretty late. Uh, once we get to one or two in the afternoon Pacific, that's 10 or 11, uh, his time, that's not good. Um, 11 is kind of pushing it. That's sort of like late dinner time or something like that. 11 a.m. Pacific is 8 p.m. Uh, his time, I think. Um, so anyway, I'm trying to figure out where to put the calls, where they make sense. But also, right now we have a free jury spring call, uh, build OGM call, a weaving the world ops call, aside from the, th the Thursday call. And I, I think those those are, may not be the right things. And uh, and uh, part of it is is. Can you say them again, Jerry? I, I think yeah. they're the right things, but it wouldn't hurt to recap. <laughs> sure, of course. So Mondays is, uh, is Free Jerry's Brain, which is the geek's corner of OGM. That one um, I don't put in. Yeah, and Stacey's on those. And and uh, I, I think having a good time or she wouldn't come back. Um, it's well, a little bit like- We uh, often say similar things, Stacey, so you can give them my perspective <laughs> as a non-technology person. Excellent. And Stacey, it's sort of like auditing a computer course in, in community college or something like that. Is that kind of what it feels like? <laughs> Pretty much. Mixed with a salon <laughs> conversation of some weird sort. Um, so we have those on Mondays. Uh, then Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Pacific, and I set those times only because there were two people in the Far East that I thought were going to join us who never did. Uh, but Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays are this call, the Build OGM call. Uh, which is meant really to strategize about the broader reach goals, aims, structure of OGM, which is a nice, I think that's a nice umbrella. Um, we've had a bunch of really interesting conversations under that theme. So that, that works pretty well. Then Wednesdays are the Weaving the World Ops calls, which is I've been trying to finish uh, the podcast called Weaving the World and then trying to rethink what it is. Stacy's been super helpful, and I still don't really have the first four episodes finished and, and like available to, to point to um, uh, for a variety of, of reasons, including distractions, including like when Russian idiots launch unsolicited attacks on neighboring countries, that tends to like really be distracting to me for some reason. But um, anyway, but then, and that's just the last week. Um, but, um, but I'm not sure that's, that, that's worked really well. And in fact, in the middle of all this, I'm in an urgent uh, mission to stand up Pick Jerry's Brain, which is my own venture to try to like set up revenues uh, and be able to participate in all these other things, uh, you know, just willingly. 
um, because as I was saying a little bit earlier, I bought those tapes for the Dominguez thing and never actually sat down and listened to them all the way. And then therefore never actually implement any, in, any of those things being more like my parents than, than like Joe Dominguez uh, or Vicky Robin and therefore didn't wind up setting myself up beautifully for, for the age I'm at right now. Um, so anyway, um, so I'm trying to figure out like between those priorities and using people's time wisely and moving projects forward, what would you recommend? What are your thoughts? Don't all jump in at once. <laughs> well, I think first of all, fewer calls is good. My calendar is really full. Um, I think clarity in each call and maybe a template if we want to do both things, but um, OGMers love to talk about the big picture and the fuzzy philosophy. Um, and then there are the strategic implementers like Pete who drag us right into, okay, that means we need to do ABC. <laughs> um, and I can't help much other than the content side of the ABC stuff. I'm not a tech person at all. Um, but I think framing the calls so that the content direction is known for the call. Are we gonna talk more today about A than B? Or do we wanna have a template that says each time we're gonna talk half about A, half about B or something? And maybe there's a C or D, I don't know. But uh, I just think that if we want productive calls that are not our typical, what's the philosophy behind this for sure as the, the main output, then we need to structure it that way. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do the philosophy. I'm just saying yeah, yeah. consciously manage that would be good. <laughs> and two things, two things pop into my mind. One is that we haven't really done agendas uh, for the calls or dashboards or things like that. Um, the call I was just on with Pete, we actually built an Airtable dashboard that he wants to put in front of us. I know. Um, for his Plex newsletter, but which will also lead right back to each of us that's, that's running a, a project in this large flotilla to be able to keep things updated a little bit better. And I think it's gonna work. I would like it to work. Um, so, and one thing I believe in is not in creating a brand new document for an agenda for each meeting, but rather like having some kind of running place where you can say, oh, here's what's up. It's funny, here, here at Ziba every Monday, there's a stand up for the week. Uh, which is at 9.30 Pacific in the morning and like whoever's in, in the building shows up downstairs and you know in the kind of kitchen lounge area and they go through and, and it's a joke. It's like, who remembers last week? And everybody's like poking around trying to figure out what happened last week and what's gonna happen this week. And I'm like, why is there no dashboard for this? Like there should easily be like, here's, here's, here are the check-ins from, from uh, this past week and here's what's up. You know, here's the bookings for this. And then if you shared that up on the, on the big monitor, you could then talk in detail about whatever and do more of a uh, uh, scrum style, here's what's stopping me or here's what needs to happen kind of thing. Good, that was spam. It's also um, the thing where I think if you have four or five topics at each particular week, you'll say, well, this week we should cover one, four and five. Next yes. week maybe we need to cover two. Um, and that kind of keeps all of the things in motion. You can move things around better and more easily. And that brings me to the second thing, which actually sort of uh, fits in nicely. Oh, it's, it's a very important call I should take because apparently my car warranty is expired. And if I act now, I'll I call can... you back. <laughs> um, God, but I love Google Fi's uh, intercepts of spam and all that kind of stuff. Cause I was seeing a transcript. It was, it was like showing me what was up. So anyway, the second, um, the second important thing is uh, the meta project seems to be spinning up a bunch of energy and it seems like there would be a reason to either join the meta, meta calls or create an OGM meta call of some sort that can act as an interface or a, a catch basin or a planning place or something like that. And I don't, I'm not, I haven't been on the meta calls so far, but um, I'm wondering how other projects should influence the calls, the standing calls we have so that we can be more helpful, more aligned and flow together. It's a good question, Jerry. <laughs> That's me. I, I ask all the good questions. 
my sense of the meta project is that there's a lot of good intent and some beginning of focus of what it could be, but it's still largely aspirational. Yeah. Um, and that makes sense to me. And I'm interested in going from aspiration to respiration, if that's not a terrible pun. Um, and helping put some energy into it and helping align us so that maybe we can this time like push it over the berm and onto the roadway and get moving as a series of projects. Um, and one of the things actually, I, I think I, I owe Jordan a call back. So I've got to give him, I'll give him a call when we're done here. But um, part of what was, what's been missing for me from Lionsburg and sort of uh, the meta project is a dashboard, like a place to see who's here, how do our projects coordinate? What are the overlaps and what did we sign up to do? Um, and there was briefly a hint that we were gonna use Notion that they were, that Lionsburg was getting kind of a corporate Notion account for some of its project participants, but that didn't happen and we didn't get on there. So I've, I've kind of like for a while now, I've been, been waiting for, okay, wh what, what platform do we end up using so that we know what's up and what's next? And, and can easily move around the ecosystem because it's the visibility across the ecosystem is really important, especially if we want to work openly together. Got to be able to see who's doing what and how it all fits. My sense is that we struggle with the transition from idea to action. And there's so many possible actions that support a given idea that it easily is fragmented and non-specific and a little bit random. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stacey, any thoughts? Keith and Wendy are doing a good job of coordinating to get some frameworks available for people to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. And for that reason, I think it's good that it was slow and small, at least, you know, for right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so for example, in talking with Pete earlier, we came across the, the money conversation conversation. So we had a couple great calls. Uh, Wendy, uh, sorry, uh, Grace led us into the money topic really well. Uh, we kind of followed up a bit and then that stalled partly because that coincided with me figuring out I needed to untangle from too many calls and hit pause on that. So that was one of the reasons that we didn't get dive deeper, but also we kind of don't have a structure or format for saying, okay, here's a powerful concept. Let's, let's pop up a new series of calls. I mean, you know, and, and more than that, to me, more interesting than that is the artifacts, the note, the, the collaborative note taking around the calls, so that each call isn't like a new podcast episode, just like ooh, cool conversation. Uh, but I think that a well curated, a well digested, a well fungi um, conversation is actually a durable asset. Um, and it's funny, um, my friend John Borthwick sent me a note uh, that was kind of like a complaint about note taking apps. And the theme of this medium post was uh, note-taking apps are terrible. We should all just forget everything. And I wrote, I wrote John back and I said, I feel like answering him with like, your problem is you haven't had good sex or I mean, taken good notes, right? Cause like I look at my note keeping thing and it like super helpful. And I go back and I can, I can figure out who somebody was when I met them long ago cause they're, they're out of this memory but they're in that memory and I can pick up and keep going. And, and I was just curating way too much stuff into the Ukraine situation. And as I get better at using it, it makes more and more sense, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, it's like a great vehicle that I'm, I'm alone at the fungus face, uh, you know, managing. So anyway, um, doing the money conversation for me means also provoking more people to be weavers and to weave content into the middle and link to each other and build a kind of build a little basket structure around the, the conversation and the topics as we go. So that somebody could then scroll back and say, oh, it looks like the, the March 1st conversation was really good. Play it, find clips, do whatever, see the notes and go from there. Um, so that's, and, and that's, 
That's what weaving the world is trying to become, is that weaving act. Right, Stacey, does that smell right? Yes, it does. Um... And also, yeah. and also to we and also to weave around other people's conversations to not always us be generating the conversation, but to rather and I don't know why I keep thinking of bottom feeding like like you know when scraps fall to the bottom of the ocean and you get like catfish that eat them, but other people can create things and we can go make them better, right? That that's kind of the the image I have and and weave them into the larger shared context. Sorry, Stacy, was there something else no, you were going to head no. toward? Well, I, I was thinking about the money conversation because I had actually come across somebody in game B and I was going to bring it up to you later because I really think we need to plan a call bringing in these couple of people. So for me, so taking the notes or, or the notes are usually really helpful to the person who took them. Um, you know, somebody else's notes does very little for me usually. However, when I've been in conversation with these people it's the person that serves as like the note wherever i'm going to find the information so if i was you know wanting to find out more about money i might click on grace and then right. find the call that she's in find her that way so that's why the conversations are so important to me mm -hmm. and what's interesting also is that the artifacts that we're storing right now, like I take the Zoom call, I download a video, I upload that to YouTube. That video on YouTube doesn't know who was in the call. And if you were savvy, you could read the little names on the, on the YouTube window and kind of figure it out sort of. Although often Zoom recordings don't actually have people's names on the windows. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I haven't actually paid enough attention. But wouldn't it be cool if when you were watching a terrific interview or whatever, you could contact the people who were in that session. That's just metadata, but that, but we're not, we're not collecting that. We're not doing that. Well, that's the thing. Like, I wonder, like, we're, so we're having the conversation and then we're wanting to map it. And I'm like, I want to find the conversation for, like, I want to look at the conversation and I want to do the mapping together with right. the conversation that's already happened. Right. Agreed. Um, it's just, a, a, Tiny example, um, oh gosh, totally spacing on his name. Um, one of our OGMers basically uh, pinpointed, um, uh, Eric. Uh, Rangel? Uh, Rangel, yeah. He basically point, pinpointed the connections episode that has the stuff about Amsterdam and, uh, and the Dutch. And I was like, oh, I would love to have a little viewing party where we go back to this terrible VHS quality video and watch it and map it together. That would be a, that would be a fun thing. I think if we all had a beer and some popcorn and whatever tools we like, and then and then hit pause every now and then to talk through the different things and add to them, that would be super fruitful. And I, I would just love to host a bunch of things like that. And then and then maybe what weaving the world is is like we have a we have a we have a queue of media like the Schmachtenberger interview with Jim Rutt or the Rushkoff interview with Jim Rutt that you just sent me, Stacy or this video of connections or you, you name it. And there's no lack of good ones. Uh, there's a, the Tyson Young Caporta interview with Jim Rutt was like phenomenal. Um, and then we just lather, rinse, repeat and, and, and turn it into a social club that's a salon that's also doing this weaving. That, that feels kind of weirdly effortless and useful. So towards the meta, go, thinking about the meta project, yeah. a lot of us agreed that it would be interesting to uh, look at that um, podcast that interviewed uh, Mariana Bos Bosan. So mm -hmm. why don't we start there? Sounds good. Which one's the Mariana Bosan? Uh, Anna Lowe Smithson and Jean Houston. It's called a Future Humans podcast. It was their first one. Is this one Mind Shifts for a Possible World that Works? I think that's the one. Schmitzman, Houston, Bosan. Okay. And that's it. Okay, I found it and I'm linking to it. Um, so, okay, go ahead. Go ahead I have a question. Hmm. Um, do we have a sense of what prospective users of this information would be looking for? Because it's not easy to know what you're going to distill out of an hour long podcast, unless you've attended it and made highlights that the key, you know, these four things were the most important parts of the podcast for me, um, but some sort of a 
search engine or tool tree or something that allows people to get a quick sense of what's there to know whether they want to commit an hour of their time or they really just want to dive into number four. Yeah. They'd like as much detail about number four, but four was maybe addressed six different times in an hour from different people's perspectives and so forth. So there's a, I'm, I'm trying to match what we are and how we do it with what customers or viewers might want to extract from it. So a couple of thoughts. One is it's really hard to serve everybody with any kind of note-taking, briefing, whatever. Um, two is sometimes briefing or trying to abstract things is damaging to the original raw information. So beware of summaries sometimes. Um, third is, let me just share a screen here, because this morning I read this article by my friend Umayyar Haik, who writes about, about the Ukraine situation, why Putin's not backing down. He's doubling down. And I put excellent after it because I thought it was a really, really well-written piece. And he basically says these things in the piece. I'm, I'm, I'm effectively quoting, I'm either quoting or paraphrasing him in my notes under here. And then I'm weaving each of those things um, into, um, so here's the neutron bomb here is, is Russia's central bank, which I hadn't put in my brain yet, but I just did. So here's the central bank of the Russian Federation. And now I'm going to build a bunch of things around, uh, around that so that, so that these things start to th hang together as a story, right? So here's Ukraine fights back, Putin doubles down. This is what, how I'm curating this particular event. And it's quirky for me and my perspective and the tool I'm using. Okay, good. The reason to have multiple weavers at the table is that each of us will have a different combination of point of view, tool, and process or something like that. And with a multitude of those things that are linking into each other. So what I would love, for example, here where I'm looking at Umayr's page uh, article, I would love to link to, to your, your comments, Judy, on a video about this same article. And then we could you know, thread through to Jordan's perspective on it or whatever. Right, and then and, and then Max Harper could do it a Miro board about it, and that could be linked here as well. And from the Miro board, he could link back over here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then with diversity of opinions and a whole proliferation of points of view, what you get partly is a, a confusion and, a, and chaos. But if each person is being pretty strict in their own curation, it kind of works out. And then what you get is a lot of options for other people to find their way in and derive something useful from it. Now, my assumption is that what people might want to consume or get a value from these things is roughly what we're each getting from them. That the reason to listen to uh, this podcast about mind shifts for a possible world is that it contains useful info. And once I've watched this either by myself or in, in, you know, in company as a watch party, which I think sounds like a lot of fun to me, um, I think we should have watch parties be great. Um, then this thought will suddenly be populated with a whole bunch more things around it and connected more to, you know, what the world is. So I have, a, I have a thought called communities trying to fix world problems, uh, where I've got radical exchange, society 2045, the Al Shark Forum, Extinction Rebellion, OFC, you know, uh, the Open Future Coalition, the Global Solutions Initiative, these are all communities, big communities. Some of them are giants like Game B um, that are trying to fix stuff. And we offer our insights back to all of them in some way that hopefully gets more useful over time. And then what we need to do to bake into the process is some kind of double or triple loop learning, which means, okay, we're going to do this. And then we're going to sit down and say what worked and what didn't work about how we did that. And then we're going to say, okay, how do we fix the process that we were using or the tools that you were using to do it? And if we just lather, rinse, repeat on that, we should get good at this and we should build a nice body of work. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And just to be clear, the reason I focused on that mind shifts is because yeah. it touches on every part that needs a shift in our whole world. And I figured that way there's something for everyone and it's a good like begin you know practice space. Oh, okay. So it's a, it's a good broad perspective. Exactly. Cool. So that feels interesting to me, Judy. Does that feel compelling or interesting? I, I, mm -hmm. Did you have Did you have to step away? No, I'm I'm here. Okay. Um, 
I lost my Zoom screen. Let, let me get oh, back. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you accidentally or not turned off your video. So. Um, so where does that leave us? There you are. Um, does that mean let's go with things as they are for the calls and call sequence? I'm thinking maybe we drop the Wednesday call, the weaving the world ops call, or turn it into a watch party. I like the turn it into a watch like party. If we've got a standing call that we could switch around and say, hey, what we're gonna do is over here is a Google spreadsheet. Um, we're taking nominations for um, podcasts to watch or document or posts to read or whatever. We will watch them together. We'll do like a little Zoom viewing party during, uh, during this hour every week. Uh, and then we'll you know, improve the results, et cetera, et cetera. That could be really good. I like that. I love that idea, but I just wanna say one time, we need, <laughs> you and I and whoever else needs time to get what we haven't gotten up yet completed. Yeah. So I would like there to be at least you know an hour call to sit and do that and anybody that wants to join can certainly help us, but we need some time for that. And that actually could be the Weaving the World Ops call because that is ops. Right, that's why I don't want you to get rid of it. Okay, so maybe the thing to do with Weaving the World Ops for the next several weeks is to just sit with the four calls we've got prototyped and finish them. Okay. That would be fine, I would love to do that. And I'm not making time, I'm obviously not making enough time to do that on my own. So having a date to do that sounds great. And we could do we could do them in segments. So if anybody wants to come, they can come. You know, like the, we could do it like a watch party because we have to rewatch some of it anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. To edit part of it, uh, part of it is that if each of us is editing a different segment, then we're each kind of distracted. And then it's more like just co-working, where. Well, that's why I think what I'm suggesting, if anybody else wants to join us that we rewatch, you could still, I'm not, not editing, but we're watching as you're doing your editing. Right. And so we just, one person screen shares and we all focus on what, whatever that one is. Yeah. That makes sense. Cool. Well, okay, so we can, we can try that out tomorrow. So what time is tomorrow? Um, I, let me check because I think I moved it around. I think you made it for 12.30 your time? Correct. Okay. That is correct. So that it's right after... I stop at one o'clock, but I can try to come on briefly. But... Okay, at one o'clock Pacific? Uh, no, one o'clock my time. Okay, so this is actually starting at noon 30 Pacific, so... Uh, two th I might uh, be done. Yeah. Noon 30 would be 2.30 here. I might be done, but I don't know for sure. Okay. I'm so confused. <laughs> about time zones or about all of this? Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble. I have to write it down. <laughs> so yeah. are we moving the one that was the, what I had down as the generative commons call? Is so that, that used to be, so what is now weaving the world operations used to be the generative commons call. And kind of what happened to generative commons agreement was we have a draft page up that's interesting, but not finished by any means. And then the conversation never, we never managed to drive ourselves to actually complete that document so that we could point to it and use it in other, in other formats. Um, I would love for it to be finished, but I don't sense that there's, you know, energy yeah. in, in the group to so do So what that. you're wanting to do is move anything that you had on in the morning on your calendar to later in the day, if it should be preserved at all. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So to 11, 12, one or two, uh, Pacific time. Yeah, that will make uh, it harder for me to attend because I have a lot of meetings that are in the afternoon. For your other, uh, for your other uh, yeah. commitments. Yeah. Okay. Um, which all matters. So we, you know, I want to find places in calendars that that actually work. And 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 we don't want you to be overwhelmed by Zoom meetings as you as you plan your reentry anyway. So. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. So so we have a short term plan for tomorrow to to use the weaving the world 
then let's post that to the Leaving the World channel on Mattermost. So, and I'll repeat the time and all that. So I'll, I'll go in and say, um, in today's call, we, we, we thought of this and we're doing that. I like it. Sounds good. And I'd like to keep the idea open of how to collaborate better with the meta project and what that means and what to do. So if you'll keep that in the back of your heads as you participate in all that kind of stuff, that'd be great. Cool. Can you stay on for a minute when the call's over? Oh, we're not ending it. Sure, yeah, we're, we're not done yet, but, uh, but I was gonna ask you all if you had other, other topics for Build OGM right now. Judy, is anything on your mind? No, I'm still trying to wrap my hand head around the the options for the architecture, and I'm not a technical person, so it's more like, how would I see myself using this, and what would I find useful? Right. And, and am I in any way similar to somebody else who would want certain things from it? Yeah, I, I mean, so for example. Um, I'll just let me just pose two or three questions that could be findable in a shared memory that should be really findable and useful. One question is, um, how do we mitigate global climate change? What are the tactics, strategies, methods, whatever? That's a really big question, but there's a lot of research on it. Um, you know, th that's a that ought to be a node that that people could could find and find a rich variety of, of solutions to. Another one is. What is Putin going to do next in the Ukraine? Uh, which is a hot current affairs question about geopolitics and uh, warfare and a bunch of other things like that. And then a third question might be, um, if you were um, 16 years old today contemplating going to college, what questions should you be asking yourself? And should, or should you go to college or not? What's the future of, how does that work? And I'm just picking randomly from interesting questions that are kind of in front of us right now. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm putting up those three questions because they might make in, any one of them or all three of them might make an interesting use case for us to talk through what someone from the outside world could come and find at those nodes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, because I, I've got tons of resources on life advice and, you know, uh, there's a thought in my brain, everyone should go to college. And then the opposite that is like, mm, should you really go to college? And I collect up articles, posts, opinions, whatever's that, that all go in there. Um, now they're all trapped inside this slightly arcane Windows 95 looking brain thing, which is part of the reason that Free Jerry's Brain has these projects to try to offer alternate user interfaces into the same brain data. So that's where we've been, that what we've been working on for a while is like, how do we, how do we take the exported data out of lib, once liberated from the brain's format, what could it look like? And, you know, what do we do? And, but we're still kind of stuck on a very brain like display. Um, so what questions come to your mind when you start thinking about how other people might benefit from the shared memory? What does that question mean to you? For me personally, it's it's either I want to know more about topic X than I currently know, mm -hmm. and what's changed recently, in particular, but in the context of of the bigger, broader framing of a foundation, would be one. And the second big question for me would be, who else cares that I might want to interact with? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. So two kinds of who else, I think. One is locally <coughs> for the conversations we're talking about who was involved and can I talk to them or should I talk to them? But then who else in the big world is actually doing work on this and might be interesting to, con to try to contact or to read more about or whatever. There's sort of two very different scales of who, right? Um, well, I, it's sort of like, well, do, you, do I want someone in Minnesota or someone in the upper Midwest or someone in the US or someone in North America? You know, it depends on the scope of the question. You know, if I'm dealing with educational systems, for instance, I'm probably more interested in US 
just because I can't influence much about what's happening in the UK or Canada. Right. But if I'm talking about educational content that should be a worldview, that's a whole different question. You know, then I want to know who's teaching subject X in a lot of different settings <laughs> mm -hmm. that I could compare notes with, because I might want to know how the UK is teaching it so that I can enrich my content in certain ways. And sometimes it's the how, not the what that matters, but that's really hard to ask, right? Mm -hmm. So Duolingo is really good for teaching languages. It's an awesome language app, et cetera. It's probably pretty good for chemistry, but I'm not sure anybody's applied it to chemistry. Um, and so hearing about Duolingo and realizing that there's a couple of things like it that are open source might be useful to somebody who's planning an open chemistry learning system or platform or app or whatever, but they wouldn't be asking about language apps. It's kind of what I'm saying. So, so somehow you need to get close enough to the interesting analogous things that you hear about them somehow and not have such a narrow search that you only find the stuff limited, like, like a piece of what the shared memory tries to be or tries to be helpful doing is say, yes, you, you're right here, but did you know that something kind of similar happened over here, except that it's, it's in a completely different domain, but if you transplanted it, it might actually work really, really well. That kind of thing. Because that's where most of my ideas come from. It's like, I hear a story and I file it away and it's totally irrelevant to the conversation at hand until the moment where it's not. Until the moment where it makes a really good example or analogy of something that's in fact possible in education around science or, or whatever, right? And the problem with searches is that the more you can refine the search, the narrower your, your, lens, the, the, your field of vision is. Which again, partly brings us back to humans, like making sure that humans are near at hand. And that- The other, the other problem is the biases of the search engines and their, their faulty algorithms for thinking they know what I wanna know when I don't. <laughs> right, right. Um, and it's funny, my experience of Google, for example, was pretty good despite that. And I, I, think, I think Google tries earnestly to help me find stuff relevant to me, given my location in Portland and my background in search, what I've searched for before and no, what Google they, knows about. They me. use all of that. So they have a profile of me. It's just that they also bias the profile to confirming what they think I want confirmed, which I don't want them to do. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and to what extent that happens, I don't know. And I haven't seen a good study about, about that because that's also a complicated question. When is Google helping and when is Google hurting, right? Yeah, and, and clearly, clearly there's a lot of racial bias in these things because we're feeding it, we're feeding these algorithms real world to, you know, data and the real world is full of bias. Um, and so the bias then shows up in the results. That, that's something people are actively trying to fix. Anyway. YouTube is doing a great job. I'm telling you, I think YouTube knows me better than I know myself. <laughs> really? That's a little frightening. Well, I was I'm exaggerating, but it, it's really on, on target, even with I, music. I was realizing this morning that YouTube is one of my major time sucks, uh, that, that I wind up in a, in a YouTube spiral. It's like, oh, I'll just check and see what happened lately in Ukraine. And it's like, oh, my God, wait, did you believe that? And then. Yeah, we need to put the parental controls on you. I know. Arr. Um, okay, so those are, um, any other thoughts about what people are looking for, or how they would look for it or how that plays out? Because I, I think that's an important thing for us to, to play through, to imagine, is what are the use cases? Who's, who's showing up and what are they looking for? And how do they find it? And partly, the more we, the more lots of people know how to use these memories and the memories are very social and syndicated, the easier it is for there to be a human at, at, on hand nearby who can help you. I mean, the way lots of people learned Unix back in the days, you know, early on was you sat down and you scratched your head and you asked the person next to you and that person would stop and go, oh, you do slash dash command this command that question mark and then like you're like oh okay and then you taught the next person down right so this this has to be something that's absorbable and reteachable easily 
so that we all wind up helping each other. And if it's too arcane and cranky, then we're not going to do that. Um, don't know where else to go with that. Any other any other topics we should talk about? I'm good. Cool. Um, Stacy, why don't we hang out and catch up a little bit? And I've got a call coming in at the top of the hour, so I've got a plenty of that, that works well. Then I think. <laughs> Thank cool. you. Awesome. Thanks. You have a good day. Bye. Bye bye. Okay.